He's got swing in his rhythm. He's got swing in his beat. Swing is the kind of music make you pat your feet, put on your dancing shoes, throw away your blues. Today we're swinging Frankie's way. Put those hands together, let me hear the beat. Feed the music from your head to your feet. Ain't no other way. Swing is here to stay, cause today we're swinging Frankie's way. Hey, put those tootsies to the test. It's the sound that we love best. If it's got a swinging beat, make you pat your feet. Hey, turn around. Now, get down. Ain't no other way. Swing is here to stay. Cause today we're swinging Frankie's way. This is Big Daddy, and you're watching my YouTube channel. The program is All That Swing, music, culture, and history of the 30s and the 40s. I'll do the best I can to entertain you for the next hour while listening to known and unusual, unusual swinging songs. Um, the main focus is on the swing craze, but we will move from the early 900 to nowadays in order to have a wider sight from the roots of jazz to the evolution of swing dance and music. This particular program that you will listen to for 36 episodes is part of the Swing European Network project, co-financed by the European Union. The Italian Swing Dance Academy, who I am a board member, represents Italy in this three-year project that has 13 partners from 11 different European countries, and whose main focus is on the artist mobility in Europe. So welcome everybody. Let's get started this episode number 17 with the great Cab Calloway and uh, flag weaver of the Swing on the Beach Festival in my hometown, Pescara, Italy. That is, everybody eats when they come to my house. <laughs> Banana, Hannah, try the salami, Tommy, give with the gravy, Davy. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Try a tomato plate, too. Here's cacciatore, Dory, taste the bologna, Tony. Everybody eats when they come to my house. I fix your favorite dishes. Hoping this good food fills ya. Work my hands to the bone in the kitchen alone. You better eat if it kills ya. Pass me a pancake, man, drink. Having a derby, Irvy. Look in the Fendel, Mendel. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Hannah, Diddy, Tommy, Dora. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Pasta fazula, tolula. Oh, do have a bagel, bagel. Now don't be so bashful, Nashville. Everybody eats when they come to my house. 
Hey, this is a party, Marty. Look at here, you get the cherry, Jerry. Now look, don't be so picky, Mickey. Cause everybody eats when they come to my house. All of my friends are welcome. Don't make me coax you, moke you. Eat the tables, the chairs, the napkins, who cares? You gotta eat if it chokes you. Oh, do have a knish, knishya. Pass him the latke, matke. Chili con carne for Barney. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Face, buster, share, chops, fump. Everybody eats when they come to my house. All right, all right, all right, all right, that was Cab Calloway, 1947, everybody eats when they come to my house. Today we're going to listen a lot of songs, a lot of hits from 1947, most of them are uh, known as um, race records, so it, it was a way to label the rhythm and blues that was surging in that period. And, uh, okay, now let's proceed with Jack McVeigh and his all-stars with the song Open the Door, Richard. When the dust settled, the words to Open the Door, Richard were credited to two black vaudevillians, John Spider Bruce Mason and Dusty Fletcher, while the music was credited to Jack McVeigh and Dan Oxwell, a fictitious name concocted by National Records, whose share was subsequently acquired by Dave Kapp. Mason and Fletcher had been performing a Richard sketch since the 30s, although no one knows if it originated with either of them. In 1946, Fletcher worked some shows with Jack McVeigh, who put the music to Richard and recorded it in September that year. We didn't have a final number to complete the session, and it was just a throw-in thing, McVeigh told Greg Dust. He worked up the routine with his drummer, Raybon Tarrant. As McVeigh's record ascended the charts, Fletcher rushed out his version on National, followed by countless others, countless others including one in Yiddish and another one in Swedish. The record was an epiphany for A&R man Ralph Bass. I was a producer of nothing but jazz, he told Norbert Hess. One day, by accident, I recorded one of the biggest pop hits of the time. Jack McVeigh has opened the door, Richard. I said, is this the kind of shit that makes money? I was spending all this money on the jazz shit and it wasn't selling, so then I got very interested in R&B. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And now let's listen to Open the Door, Richard. Old band's been out to the club having a little ball tonight. My friend Richard went home early, you know. He got the only key to the house. I have to knock on the door to see if I can get in. Open the door, Rich. See, Richard sleeps in the back room. It's kind of hard to hear. Maybe I better knock a little louder. Open the door, Rich. I don't think Richard heard me yet. Knock one more time to see what's going to happen here. Open the door, Richard. Open the door and let me in. Open the door, Richard. Richard, why don't you open that door? Open the door, Richard. Open the door and let me in. Open the door, Richard. Richard! Richard, why don't you open that door? Open up the door, man. It's cold out here. 
here in this air. Now look, there's that woman across the street looking out the window. Every time I'm late, I wonder if I, where's he been? Where's he been? Time to find out what's happening. Yeah. Yes, it's me and I'm late again. Did you hear what the lady said, Jack? No, what she said, Raver? She said, oh, boy, if he was only by. Ah. I'll have to knock again. Rich has got to get up. Open up the door, Rich. Red, you got a key to my no, front door? I don't have no key, Jack. I don't have a key. Well, somebody got to get in the house some kind of way. Well, I know he's in there. How you know he's in there? I can hear him breathing. Boom. Mm -hmm. Let's knock one more time. Richard, open up that door, man. Maybe Richard's gone. No, Let's try him one more time. I know I got on the suit. He's got to be in there. Knock one more time. Man. Open the door, Richard. Open the door and let me in. Open the door, Richard. Richard, why don't you open that door? Open the door, Richard. Richard! Open the door and let me in. Yes, 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 Jack McVeigh and his all stars, 1947, open the door, Richard, open the door and let me in. And now let's step back to 1938 with the great Count Basie Orchestra and stop beating the, stop beating around the mulberry bush, a nice and funny song. Stop beating around. The more better birds come out and say you love me. Oh, this is the way when my heart. You better start before we part. La 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 la. Let's start before we part. Stop beating around. The more better birds. The more better birds. The more better birds. Stop beating around. The more better birds. Come out and say you love me. Come out and say you love me. 
Yes, the great Jimmy, the great Jimmy at voice with the Count Basie Orchestra. Stop beating around the mulberry bush. Jimmy rushing. Now let's go back to 1940, uh, go forward to 1947 with Eddie Winson and his orchestra. Eddie Winson cleaned, was equally skilled as a blues singer and as a bluish altoist who played, would play credible bebop. When he was 16 years old, he played with the Chester Bone Big Band along with Illinois Jacket and Arnett Cobb. In 1936, he was with Milt Larkin's Orchestra. In 1940, with Floyd Ray Orchestra. From 1942 till 1945, he played with Cody Williams and he put up his own big band in 1946 until 1947. And this is the song we're gonna, uh, th that's one of the songs he recorded and we're gonna listen now. Then uh, in 1942-43, he was with the septet of John Coltrane and in 1961, he was in Europe playing along in the big band of Jay Mekshon. The song we're gonna listen to is All Made Boogie. All Maids has been a staple of blues and especially hilly billy music since the down of the phonograph era. This was a big hit and Winoni Harris picked up the team a couple of years later with sitting on it all the time. Although Winston credited this to himself, he was adapting Numa Lee Davis' 1946 Savoy record, All Made Boogie, featuring Russell Jacket and Dexter Gordon. And Davis' record also provided the inspiration, not to mention plenty, of the lyrics for Harry's record. Unlike Louis Armstrong, who would usually insert another soloist between his vocal and trumpet choruses, Winston goes from vocal to sax solo with barely a chance to catch his breath. Old Maid Boogie, Eddie Winston, clean it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wait, Eddie Clean at Winson, All Made Boogie 1947, and you listening, watching uh, All That Swing by Big Daddy. Music, culture, and history of the 30s and the 40s. And now let's step back to 1938, 1939, sorry, with Lionel Lampton and the song Sweethearts on Parade. And the, his musicians were Chew Berry at the tenor sax. Clyde Hart at the piano, Alan Reyes on guitar, Milt Hinton on bass, the Milt Hinton is one who played a long time with Cap Calloway, Cozy Cole on drums, he played a long time with Cap Calloway as well after leaving the Staff Smith combo, and Lionel Hampton on vibraphone and vocal, Sweethearts on Parade, 1939. Lampton with the great Chew Berry on the tenor sax, Sweethearts on Parade. And now, as usual, let's proceed reading the book Swinging at the Savoy, the memoir of a jazz dancer, written by Miss Norma Miller in 1996. The first book about talking about the Lindy Hop, really talking about the Lindy Hop. So, there is a new chapter here of the personal story of Norma Miller, either of the widest lindy hoppers one day i came into the ballroom i saw whitey with the most handsome black woman i had ever seen she was tall and statuesque with burnt brown skin i knew immediately i was in the presence of a star and she was indeed a star the most famous black woman in the world miss ethel waters 
Miss Waters had visited because the Lindy Hop was popular and she wanted to learn it. She was also thinking of adding the Lindy Hop to her show. She had come to the right place and met the right man. It was agreed that Miss Waters would come to the ballroom in the evening and dance with Frankie. Dancing would also be good for a weight with which she constantly struggled. She came to the ballroom that night with her usual escort, Archie Savage. Frankie danced with her and I danced with Archie. Archie and I were friends, so it was no hardship. Besides, Archie was a good dancer. It was considered best that Miss Waters go through her paces with Frankie, since Frankie was the expert and could maneuver her weight. It was strictly floor dancing. She wasn't going for any prize. She was the prize, and she was to be handled with kid clothes. For, the re- for that reason, only Frankie was allowed to dance with her. So we begin teaching Miss Waters the Lindy. Usually she would come in on Friday nights, which were club nights and less crowded. She didn't dance in the corner. She was allowed a much, as much room on the floor as she wanted. She was always a bit of a distraction for the other patrons, but after a few weeks, everyone got used to her being there. So the preparation to add us to her show began, and our teams were formed. Willamé Esnuki, Ella and Long George, and Leon and I were partners. We were Whitey's Lindy Opers. The show that we were to tour with consisted consisted of Derby Wilson, the Brown Sisters, Eddie Mallory's band, and a comedy team. Our first date was at the Apollo with Pigmeat and as the comedy act. From there we played the Award in Washington DC, the Royal in Baltimore, and then we started on the Paramount Circuit. We performed in Cleveland, Columbus, Chicago, and even Los Angeles. When we arrived in Chicago, Wadi was there to meet us He would follow us to uh, the different cities in his car. He wouldn't let us go on our own. He still wanted us to rehearse every day, but with our schedule it was not an easy thing to do. It was Whitey's way of keeping the reins pulled, pulled tight. He wanted everyone to know that we were still his act, especially Adult Waters. That's a very important chapter of the life of Miss Norma Miller. So now let's proceed with the great Winon Aries and All Stars. Time to change your town. <laughs>
soldier when the war was going on. And now the war is over. She's trying to come back home. Yes, I'm sorry, baby. Sorry, I've got to push you down. All right, all right. Wayne on Aries with Oscar Pettiford on bass and uh, Oscar Pettiford on bass. Yes, the great bass bass player whose mother and uh, father were Indians, American Indians, and half African American. And with him, there was uh, supposedly because they we're not sure about it. Walter Gray on the tenor saxophone. The great Walter Gray that played with Count Basie and lost his life in Las Vegas. Somebody said in a mysterious way, but I know which was the way Norma Miller told me about it. And Jim Phillips on guitar. So that was Time to Change Your Town. Now let's listen to... One o'clock jump from the Count Basie Orchestra, 1943 version in a personal redo of the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra. <laughs>
Quite alright, the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra from the record Savoy Heyday, the song was One O'Clock Jump. And now let's listen a song from Joe Turner, Big Joe Turner, while you're listening and watching Big Daddy and all that swing, music culture and history about the swing craze. So Big Joe Turner, Big Joe Turner was a uh, in the late 30s his style fully was fully formed and he was a powerful blues shouting flexible enough to fit into several musical ears like swing rhythm and blues rock and roll mainstream jazz he was a singing he started as a singing bartender in KC in Kansas City clubs and he had a long friendship and cooperation collaboration with Pete Johnson the pianist And in 1938, John Hammond brought him to the Carnegie Hall to take part at, um, at um, concepts from spiritual to swing. And it became an immediate hit. Duke Ellington had him in the review, uh, in the review Jump for Joy as well. And he had a lot, uh, lots of hits during the 50s, rock and roll hits, I mean, with Johnson... Uh, Lewis, Joe Sullivan, Albert Ammons, and so on. The song we're going to listen to is Sally Zuza of 1947. And it's, uh, even though this song is no more than a collection of random conflicts, there is no mistaking what it's all about, nor any mistaking Joe's exuberance. Sally Zuza. <laughs> Joe Turner, Sally Zuzas, 1947. And now let's listen to one of the band that was um, a great, that had a great time during the neo-swing 
movement of the 90s. So, this band comes from California. The name is the Chess Cats. The record of made on 1998, it's a Swingus Vidus. The name of the song sang by... They had a, a, um, a fascinating singer that was Delala Moro. And uh, I saw the band playing twice here in my hometown. And I was able to manage a couple of concerts for them while touring Europe. And the song we're going to listen to is the great Swing, Brother Swing! <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, 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 a great rendition of Swing Brother Swing by the Chess Cats from California. And from their record, Esfingus Vidus, 1999. Great Delilah Morrow on vocals. Okay, let's proceed with another little excerpt from Swinging at the Savoy, Norma Miller. We began to resent his being there, Whitey. And it was subtle at first, but we all started to feel like, who needs him? And I think he felt it too. And Edel Waters understood the all that Wiley had over us, and being a compassionate woman, she resented the way we had, he had treated us. She wanted to protect us, but she was smart enough to know not to interfere with Wiley's act. She chose not to say anything then, but wait for a better time. During an engagement in Cleveland, Miss Waters called the Phyllis Wadley house where we were staying and left instruction for us to meet her at a big department store downtown. We were very surprised and wondered why. When we arrived at the store, we were told to meet her in the coat department where she had us all try on coats. We picked out green coats in all different styles and she bought one for each of us. All the safe people in the store were watching. There we were in the biggest department store in Cleveland with the star, Miss Ethel Waters. The whole store was excited with the event. How lucky could a group of kids be? This did not sit well with Whitey. It is, he believed that she was trying to take us away from him, that she was trying to buy our love. He was an obsessive jealousy, and this was the first time anyone else had taken care of us. He felt that his authority had been challenged, and it was the beginning of a fight between the two strong personalities. A battle between Vardy and Miss Waters, these two tyrants, was bound to happen before our closing at the state in Chicago. One morning, when George ordered cornflakes for breakfast, we arrived at the theater to find Miss Waters in a stew about something. Whenever she was bothered by something, anyone walked around on eggshells. Nobody liked to get Miss Waters' dander up and it was certainly up this morning. When the opening was over and we were leaving the, th the wings, we heard Miss Waters say, and tell Mr. White I want to see him when he gets to the theater. Uh-huh. Mr. Waters let Waddy have it. Waddy was a scrapper from the old days, and with Miss Waters, he, had, he was up against a street fighter like himself. Well, I suggest you to read the biography of Miss Water, or Miss Waters, Ed Waters. It's it's really something. It's really touching, and uh, the first chapters about her childhood are something really strong. Something really strong. Believe me. This was her show. She paid good salaries to all her cast. She paid Wadi a good salary to supply the Lindy Hoppers for his show. She let him know she didn't like hearing that the dancers were wake, were, weren't were making enough money to buy a substantial breakfast. We heard her say, you can't do a good show on cornflakes. Now we understood what happened and that it was about Long George. The funny thing was, it was just cheap. He could have afforded a better breakfast if he had wanted to have one. But Miss Waters was under a different impression. It led her to ask just how much Wadi was paying us. And so the two of them had the real blowout. Nothing was the same after that. We already knew Wadi was being paid more for us than he was giving us. Miss Waters told Willamay how much she was paying Wadi for us, and Willamay knew what we were getting. It was a big difference. This added to the strain between Wadi and his top dance act. Wow, she was, she was, 
a great fighter and a great artist, Miss Everwater. And now let's listen to the Big Three Trio, Signifying Monkey, with Willie Dixon. And we will talk about this song and this group later at the end of the song, 1947. <laughs> You call yourself the Jungle King You call yourself the Jungle King I found out you ain't a doggone thing Here's the monkey to the line on the bright summer day There's a big fat cat living down the way He talked about your folks in a heck of a way A lot of other things I'm afraid to say The line jumps up all full of rays Like a Harlem cat that's blown his gaze He meets the elephant up under the tree He says, now big boy, it's you or me The elephant looks him from the corner of his eyes Better find someone to fight your side The lion jumps up and makes a fancy pass But the elephant knocks him over in the grass They fought all night and they fought all day I don't know how the lion, well, he got away He come back to the jungle more dead than alive And that's when the monkey really started his jive You call yourself the jungle king You call yourself the jungle king You call yourself the jungle king I found out you ain't a doggone thing up his temper when he's jumping up and down and his foot missed the limb and his head hit the ground like a bolt of lightning and a streak of heat the lion was on him with all four feet but the monkey looks up from the corner of his eyes says now mr lion i apologize the monkey on his back studies up a scheme he's trying to trick that Jungle King, be fair with me, I wish you would, I tear you up all over the wood. The lion jumps up, squares off for a fight, but the monkey jumped completely out of sight. So if you bother me again, I'll turn you over to my elephant friend. You call yourself the Jungle King, you call yourself the Jungle King. All right, all right, the big three trio. Signify Monkey, 1947. The big three trio was still some way off when Baby Duke Caston met Willie Dixon in the late 30s. Dixon, the bass player, the famous bass player of the... Of the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, was from Vicksburg, Mississippi, and uh, he'd hobbled to Chicago in 1936, aged 21. Kasten was hanging around Eddie Nichols' gym playing his guitar when he found that Dixon could sing bass. They put together the Five Breezes in 1940 and cut a session for Bluebird before the war. Kasten sought out Dixon after the war and formed the Big Three Trio, with guitarist Bernardo Dennis, who had been in uh, Four Jumps of Jai with Dixon. They took their name from performances that Caston had made with Negro USO Troop 56 in front of the big three Allied commanders, Eisenhower, Montgomery and Zuko. Signify Monkey was their first big hit, and some see it as a proto-rap record because it draws on the legend of the signifying monkey that had apparently come to America with the Yoruba slaves. Sometimes the monkey escapes onto the tree, sometimes he gets his, kick, his ass kicked, but he always comes back to signify some more. Lines from the song crop up in songs by Ch Chuck Berry and Bob Diddley, and the entire song was updated in Smokey Joe's 1955 Sun recording, and more recently in School D's 
1987 hit Signifying Rapper. Dixon said that he was selling hand-printed song sheets of Signifying Monkey soon after he came to Chicago and that the lyrics were much saltier than those heard here. I decided to clean it up and it didn't sell as well, he wrote in his biography. He and the trio recorded it first for Bullet Records in 1946 and again for Columbia in March 47. So it was Signify Monkey. And now let's step back to 1937 with the great Fletcher Anderson and What's Your Story? What's Your Jive? Yes, yes, Fletcher Anderson, Orchestra, 1937. What's your story? What's your jive? You ain't gonna leave this earth alive. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, happy cats and kittens, you've been listening to All That Swing by Big Daddy, music, culture, and history of the 30s and the 40s. This program that uh, you've been listening to uh, is made of 36 episodes and this one was the number 17 and it is part of the Swing European Network project co-financed by the European Union. The Italian Swing Dance Academy, who I am a board member, represents Italy in this three-year project that has 13 partners from 11 different European countries uh, whose main focus is the artist mobility in Europe. And Big Daddy here takes care of the culture and history program of the project so here i am with this program and uh, i'll be seeing you next month folks and now it's up to sarah vohan and her peter gunn team from 1964 to tell you bye bye so long Every night your line is busy, all that buzzing makes me dizzy Couldn't count on all my fingers, all the dates you had with swingers Boy, bye, boy, baby I'm gonna kiss you goodbye and go right through that doorway
should stare at the back of my head If you write a letter to me, my former friend, don't you ever 